<clears throat> Scientists decided to start Jurassic Park. Oh, I saw that, or me. I saw that. The question is, can they reproduce? So can can these dire wolves reproduce? I mean, I guess the other question would be, will they even survive in our world? Because obviously the world has changed significantly since dire wolves were around. Uh, are they even going to, uh, will they even be capable of growing? Because the issue is, let's say that dire wolves are making a comeback. This presents a massive issue for the current uh, uh, ecosystem. Because dire wolves are stronger and faster than any wolf. So the places where the di these dire wolves will live, uh, they're going to be the rulers of those areas. Because they're massive. At least they get massive. So yeah, it, 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 it would be problematic if they were to release these things into the wild and just go, live free, buddy. Think that it mammoths before the wolves, though, no? Zafan, everyone's, everyone is celebrating this as the first time ever. So I'm not sure if we've brought back mammoths yet. Or if we brought them back successfully at least. Someone did a you will never be uh, a woman copy paste about dire wolves. Um, a better question is why are we reviving predators and not herbivores instead? Uh, Asidia, the issue is even with herbivores. Um, so, firstly, I, I don't think it's a case of we have a selection and we, we're just bringing them back as we see fit. I think it's more they, they managed to find enough intact DNA of a dire wolf to be able to bring it back. Because a lot of the skeletons and stuff we have would have DNA, but the DNA might be deteriorated to the point where we physically cannot really use it. And so that would create just, we wouldn't be able to piece it together uh, enough to build the species that way. Uh, but also, even just herbivores can create significant problems if you bring back the wrong one. So imagine, for example, you brought back uh, Brutosaurus or the long neck ones the amount that those things eat they would probably create chaos in the ecosystem because again the world is very different now than what it used to be back in the day Johnny welcome 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 I have no idea Shane Structure is good. The Taurus project, if you want to see herbivore awesomeness, it doesn't present an issue for me. I can tame it. Johnny, I don't think you can tame it. 12 centimeter of asphalt on the streets won't hold. Well, the the I'm not even thinking about what it would do to our infrastructure. I'm just thinking so for dinosaurs, we kind of know already that our current climate won't really be able to sustain them at least not the big ones because the atmosphere was a lot denser during the age of the dinosaurs so the atmospheric pressure was a lot denser because that allowed them to fill up their lungs the issue is if you add something like a brutosaurus today it would just pop like a little balloon because there's literally not enough air pressure to keep their lungs intact right and also wouldn't be enough air pressure for them to even fill their lungs so you'd have issues right i don't think they'll pop like a balloon it will probably just be they'll suffocate so once they get to like maturity they'll suffocate because the air pressure just isn't enough to force air into the lungs <clears throat> Yeah, can you imagine their farts or their poo, man? Um, worked with greys. They hated humans due to abuse, but they loved me. So either I'm not human or really good at what I do. Hey, you know, if that works, it works. But exoskeleton animals used to be bigger, right? Take that's why almost all animals used to be a lot bigger. Because the atmosphere was a lot denser. The air pressure was a lot higher. Uh, 
after I watched the video on this years ago. After so when when what we speculate was the meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs, it changed the atmospheric landscape of the earth to the point where only really small mammals survived. And so they were able to repopulate and sort of build out the earth. Uh, whereas the big ones, even if they weren't killed by the actual impact, they would have been killed by the air pressure eventually. You can revive ancient, fully extinct species, only make their pos uh, posterity more, like some of their ancestors. We would probably, so here we could probably revive almost every type of fish. Because the ocean's pressure, as far as I know, is still relatively unaffected that hasn't really changed the 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 pressure of water will be the same no matter what so these these animals in the ocean the problem is do we really want to go back to that because i would i would say one of the big problems is for almost all of Earth's history, the oceans were the one place you did not want to be. There were some crazy dangerous things in the oceans. Like, the oceans were scary as shit. Right? So, yeah. Uh, fundamentally, I don't think we should be reviving some of the scary crap that used to exist uh, in the oceans. So, jacking over revival of extinct species. Rakan, no one is soy jacking over it. We're discussing sort of in the world where you could bring them back, what would actually happen? <clears throat> Oceans are the PvP server. Dude, taking going to the beach and having a swim would take on a whole new meaning if if we suddenly brought back all of the extinct species that used to exist in the ocean. California coast. We know more about space than we do about our oceans. True. People on social media are acting as if we brought back direwolves. Suddenly, it's going to be bubonic, bubonic plague. They told. We're going to. I mean, according to the researchers, they've been able to do it. Although I haven't read the articles yet, so my imagination here tells me that they probably just spliced the DNA with normal wolves. So they're not pure dire wolves. They're more like a almost hybrid species. Uh, or, more likely, it's theoretical. So they've been able to bring them back in a model or something. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm genuinely not sure. Because I'm not even sure how we would begin to bring them back properly. Massive, Kane Corso. I have to look, at, look up at them. People on social media, local store promised two uh, eight gig sticks for 44 euro. Yeah, that's good. 16 gigs is fine. Yeah, so I didn't read the articles. I just sort of saw the headlines and my immediate thought was, I doubt it's a pure direwolf species, probably just some hybrid species that they brought back. Um, the negative take is they added di uh, direwolf DNA to greyhounds. They said they found a dang and spliced with hearts and cloned. Yeah, I, I like. It, how would you bring back a pure species? Like, think about it. Like, how would you? How would you be able to? Because you would effectively have to create them from from the ground up in a lab, which we cannot do. We don't know how to do that. Right. So yeah. The, yeah, you can time travel, but we can't do that either, at least yet. And here's the thing that sort of it's the it's the um it's the time travel paradox. We know that we have never invented time travel because no one has ever traveled back in time from the future to tell us how to invent time travel. Right, so we know that we've likely never invented it and we will never invent it because otherwise, where are these people that's supposed to be traveling back in time? Unless they're keeping it under wraps or some shit. Saving, how are you doing? 
maybe we only can move forward. I don't think we can do either of those things, really. <clears throat> what am I looking at here? We have three dire wolves, Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi. Romulus and Remus is now a little over five months. Khaleesi is about six weeks old. We knew that they were bigger. They were about 20% to 25% bigger. We knew that based on morphology of the skull, we knew that they had bigger, stronger skulls. We knew that they were thicker and they were about 20 to 25% heavier. They are now in the middle range where most of the wolves are five months. There's about 15,000 years of genetic divergence between our two samples and they're not originally found separately. So, so we, 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 we do believe that will fall. And we didn't know, know because, because there's nothing scales, scales and they had this like, like main to them. Crazy. We're in the ending process of the mammoth and the fast. Not, not quite, quite yet the dough, but on the mammoth and the fast. The cells, cells are working, the edits are coming back positive, everything looks good. good. The boy mouse was the first time we took it to a full live animal. The boy mice barely eat. The Daryl's birth, the Daryl we were in October. We started the project 18 months before we birthed them. And so I think that shows a little robustness of both our tools and process and the team, but I think it also shows, you know, the thoughtfulness in being able to take like 13,000 year old, two, and then 73,000 year old skulls and puppies. And we did it in 18 months. The issue with this is just, and um, you have to go back to Jurassic Park with just that one quote. He was so busy asking if we could do it. You never stop to ask if we should do it. Are they to be reintroduced to the wild or will they be circus animals? I, I'm worried about the concept, saving of them being introduced into the wild because you you never know now the only thing i can see them do here is maybe these things can't procreate because of reasons or whatever but if they can procreate uh one lucky thing might be that they're because there's very little ge genetic diversity they'll die out very soon again because there'll be way too much uh sort of intermixing uh, between them, but let's say everything went well and they reintroduced them to the wild. If these things truly have enough direwolf DNA in them, it would create massive problems uh, within the ecosystems. Huge problems. No diversity. They left, uh, the left will kill them. <laughs> A group I'm in thinks these animals will all go on big game reserves because there's no protections written for them. Yeah, there might be inbred defects, there might be all manner of problems. Maybe they can bring back the Japanese wolves that were hunted to extinction? They do it because you must do Nearshot to progress your academic career and researchers are running out of things to do. Yeah, why can't they work on things that matter? Like, for example, actual graphics cards that actually make graphics run better and faster and not just software that makes it look like it runs better and faster. That would be a worthwhile academic goal. But instead, we're bringing back species that are already extinct for most likely good reasons. You know, if a species goes extinct, it, it I don't think you should interfere with that. It's the natural cycle of life. You know, like sometimes species just aren't equipped to deal with changing circumstance and you have to accept that uh, like you can't you can't interfere with that it has to because it will make space in the long run for new animals to come up going full send how much beer was consumed they should do it in last two living rhinos they are both female before they're extinct again when it comes to rhinos so yes, poaching of rhinos were a significant problem, but it wasn't just that. The rhino species have been in trouble for a while, even before uh, the poaching became as big of a problem as it is. So while poaching significantly contributed to um, one of the, it's not both, it's just, it's one of the rhino species. Uh, is it the white or the black rhino? 
one of them is going extinct. But it was already struggling long before poaching became a serious issue. Gamer of Earth, how are you doing, bro? <laughs> because of our adaptability? Well, literally, humanity became the dominant species of the world because of our ability to adapt to literally every single environment. And it's not so much that we are able to adapt to our environments, it's that we're the only species that are able to adapt our environments to us. So we actually change the environment um, to fit what we can do or how we need to live where other species literally just have to adapt to whatever it is or die as a result. As there are even ants and birds and beavers can only do it within a range. Right? So there are ranges to what they can allow. If things go outside those ranges, even they end up dying. Right. Um, so yes, to some extent, they also adapt uh, their environment to what they need. But the environment still plays a significant role. Whereas outside of the Earth literally becoming a, a hundred degrees Celsius all over... And even then, there's a good chance that humans might still find a way to survive, provided it doesn't happen overnight. You know, so for example, imagine a world where temperatures do get significantly higher, right? So slowly but surely, we are marching towards 70, 80, 90 degrees Celsius. So there's a couple of options we can do here. Option number one is we can start building underground cities. Because... If you go down to about six feet under the Earth's uh, surface, the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius pretty much always, no matter how hot it is outside. So we could build underneath, right? We can go into caves, we can build underwater. So we still have a lot of ways of adapting and surviving, which obviously other animals just do not have. 